came to listen to us. <laughs> so this is what we see and we have all these ducks over there. It's like a live audience. <laughs> Um, so we are in uh, Hyde Park. I'm here with uh, Raj. Hi, I'm Raj. <laughs> so where are you from? So I'm from Gujarat, India. Okay. And yeah, that's my story. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, <laughs> okay. what's the backstory? Like, how did you decide? to come here? Have you traveled before to other countries? So basically, I'm from India, mm -hmm. but I have not stayed in India for too long. When I was a kid, when I was about in 2008, my, me and my family, we moved to Sharjah, UAE. Okay. Uh, and we were there for about six years. I did my schooling over there. And then after going there, we moved to Saudi Arabia. Okay. Because my dad, he had another job over there. So I finished my last year of school over there and then I went back to India. I went back to India in 2018, did my okay. bachelor's in business administration. And in 2019, I decided to go to Czech Republic in January. Oh. Uh, it was a great experience. I went to Czech Republic and s since I had a Schengen visa, I could travel to other European countries also. So nice. we ended up going to Germany. We went to Austria as well. And yeah, that's about it. So you've traveled a lot before you came here. And you've seen uh, also European cultures, like d different countries and different cultures. And I've seen a lot of cultures. I have experienced them, yes. Yeah. I saw when I was younger, Okay. I was uh, in Greece. I noticed like a lot of my friends, the ones that studied abroad mm -hmm. in other countries, when they came back, I noticed something changed about them like they were more open-minded healthy ideas to see how a different system works a different country right. different rules uh, different cultures because I, I noticed from my friends that the ones who did it and, and experienced it mm. they came back with a fresh mind yeah in Greece you speak Greek right yeah and when they go to the US or when they go to outside countries they usually start speaking English. A language is the most important thing, one of the most important things about a culture. Okay, if yeah. a language is gone, the culture can be wiped out in an instant. And I have noticed that, so for example, I speak well, my English, I speak well now, but my English wasn't that good before. By the time I started speaking English well, I also started focusing more about uh, more on my local languages. So, for example, Sanskrit is the institution I'm taking, by the way. I'm studying my ancient language okay. of humanity right now. It's very interesting. Uh, for me, a pivotal moment is uh, when I learned English because here I use them more, way more often on my everyday life and I speak them as well. Yeah. I, I experienced it like some levels. The first mm. level is that when you watch movies, yeah. you understand. You understand. But when you try to speak, it's harder it's to harder. bring the words. So when you start to speak every day and you practice that, yeah. you get to another level that you experience talking as well. Mm. And then the, the pivotal moment for me is when you catch yourself thinking in English mm. at some point. The reason I did bachelor's in business administration in my university was because I was not that good at science and maths when I was okay. in school two years ago. I realized that I'm very much interested in science and mathematics, but it's just that when I started studying maths and science as a subject, I usually used to be good at subjects like biology, but then when it came to physics, when it came to mathematics, I never got the grasp. I never understood what it meant and the reason I attribute it to is English. I was not that good at English until I was in, I would say, the 10th year of my school, 11th year of my school, I was not that good at English. But by the time I reached 11th year of my school, I had already decided that I'm going to do business administration because I was not that good at mathematics. So, yeah, I mean, you do realize, but if I start studying maths now, I mean, I am, I'm working only part time. So the rest of my days I sit at home, I'm doing my Sanskrit classes. Okay. That's the tuition I'm doing. I'm also self-teaching myself mathematics. I'm self-teaching myself all the school level mathematics and science right now. And then once I'm done with that, maybe I'll take up something else, maybe an engineering course or something. Okay. Not a university course, but just get the book and then do it on your own. Yeah. But now I find it a lot, lot, lot more easier. 
you know, because now I know English. And we live in this uh, day and age. We are very fortunate that you have access in all this information by a click of a mouse or in the phone. And actually, this is how I learned uh, photography. Because I, I, I was a graphic designer in the beginning. And then I was thinking to either go to a school to learn uh, web development, okay. like programming, mm -hmm. or photography. And I said to myself, instead of spending all this money to go to a school, I can invest this money on gear. And I bought my first camera, my first lenses. And I sat down every night, instead of watching Netflix or movies, I was watching uh, lectures on photography and I got all the technical stuff down. It's easy if you have uh, the self-control to teach yourself a lot of skills now. Have all this access to all this information. You can be sp smart about your budget as well. Mm. I mean, I feel like every human has a tendency by birth to be creative. That's what humans have always been. But I think capitalism is killing it. There is also a resistance from the brain. For instance. There, be, because whenever you watch something, whenever you watch shorts, your brain releases dopamine. Yeah. And then you swipe up, there's more dopamine. You swipe up, more dopamine. You stop swiping, no dopamine. <laughs> your brain wants more, so you go back. So people develop that addiction. People say smoking is bad. People say this is bad, that is bad, drinking is bad. But they don't realize that then when they're on their phone, and they're swiping for like 20 it's minutes. It's an addiction as well. It's an addiction as well. I don't have that. And it's easier for the brain because the brain doesn't want to spend all this energy. I have a program now that I work out every day. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of times that I try to convince myself for 20 minutes or more that, man, you have to do this. Come on, come on, stand up, stand up, stand up. So you're studying here as well, yeah? I am studying, I'm doing my master's. So they have really complicated terminologies over here. Master's in science and international business management. So it's okay. master's in science, but international business management. I'm doing it just, just so that I could come to the UK. So okay. the whole reason why I decided to come to the UK was, uh, I'll tell you the backstory. So when COVID happened, when the lockdowns happened, People went on their phones and they started going to Netflix and passing time. For me, I started reading a few books. I started reading about history. I started watching a lot of podcasts about history, about geopolitics, how politics works, mm -hmm. how global politics works. And I really got interested in it. I came to know how big of a status India had just a thousand years ago. If you consider 100% of the global GDP to be 100 trillion, 35 trillion of it came from India alone. When you consider that, and when you consider that the Turkish invasion, the Mughals that came in, uh, you can see how the story changed. It shifts. It shifts. So we had this ruler called Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. He defeated the Turks and then he flipped the story again. And then again, we started being very prosperous. We started being... Uh, really good at exporting our things. Uh, we started trading very nicely and then we are going back up and I think just um, until 300 years ago we were still one of the largest GDPs in the world. But then the British came in, the colonials came in and they shattered our economy. So I was like I need to go there and find out for myself to see, to experience everything that has happened around me, to learn the outside perspective of what okay. had happened. Because, okay, so tomorrow you're sleeping and you have, you have locked everything in your house, right? And then an invader comes in, he opens the lock, he comes in, he steals and he goes. Okay. Whose fault do you think it is? Is it your fault? Is it, is it his fault for coming in? Okay, I would blame him for sure. It's uh, I think uh, every person. It's uh, natural. First, uh, it's yeah. natural. But then also I have some fault because I wasn't prepared to to face the invasion and to I guess. Yeah, that, like that's somebody that was prepared would have acted differently. And probably would have prevented him from stealing everything. Yeah, I guess. that's exactly w w what happened. I, I feel like what happened in our country as well. So you could have used better locks. Or you could have been more safer by using two locks instead of one. You could have done something to prevent. You could, you could have used an alarm, do, alarm. alarm bell. Uh, you could have done a lot of things to prevent it from happening, but you didn't. So throughout history, I've learned that even though India was 
the largest economy in the world by far throughout history. I'm not talking about the recent events, I'm talking about throughout history. Mm -hmm. What we lacked was, uh, we lacked uni unity. Okay. We lacked that internal cohesion. I'll tell you why the Turks succeeded. So before we had this thing called kingdoms, it was still an Indian subcontinent. We had different rulers in different parts of the country fighting against each other for ruling different parts of the country. And what happens when one ruler goes down, the other ruler goes in and takes his throne. That's, that's what used to happen. There was no unity among our people. And the Turks, they took advantage of it. And the Brits as well, they took advantage of it. For the Brits, it could have been an easy target because as far as I remember Chhatrapati Shivaji, he was from Maharashtra and we have a really big country. So to try and defend the whole country at the same time, it would have been a very, it, was a, it would have been a close to impossible task. So we lack, we lack that unity. But now what we have is that we are a nation state. We, just like the US, just like UK, we are a combination of different countries. Uh, and we have one central government. So I feel like unity is finally starting to come back in. Okay. And, but in the age of internet, there is so much propaganda going on. So, yeah, I came to learn the outside perspective uh, and just to see how things are, how people think about. It's good to find the other perspective as well. For instance, I am Greek. If I only get my information from Greeks and Greek media, they say oftentimes a different story. What people in America might hear. So it's good to expose yourself in the other side as well and hear the other side of the story and then make a conclusion. So this is very healthy and of course yeah. it requires a lot of energy. Not everybody can do it. Did you face any difficulties when you first came here? I am Indian. I've lived in India for about 15 years now. Yet I am a nomad because I've traveled, I've lived in a lot of different places. Because I had gone to Czech Republic, I somewhat knew what I could expect over here. Okay, yeah, 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 makes sense. Although the, the eating habits and the food habits of people, that was a cultural shock to me. Okay. <laughs> Uh, he wants to be on the podcast. So, like I was saying, back in India, uh, we have this thing that don't. If you eat street food, you're gonna get sick, and you're gonna get this, and you're gonna get that. And to some extent, it's true. The street food of India, if you can eat it, you have a good digestive system. That's okay. all I can say. <laughs> Which I didn't when I <laughs> when I did, went there for my bachelor's. But when you come here, you realize that in the name of health, they try to keep it clean but at the same time they try to use a lot of chemicals to make it clean okay yeah and it's I, heavily processed it's heavily processed and even when you go to restaurants um, when you see that when they're cleaning it up they use chemicals to clean it up they have something for for contamination but i don't think the chemicals that they use in the restaurants for cleaning counts as contamination okay yeah and sure. even the the eating habits of the people here I mean they do not know what's good for them or what's not good for them most of the times I see people they are eating whatever they feel like eating they do not have a specific time of eating they, they eat whenever they feel like it and yeah these are few new things to me because again in my family we have we don't eat snacks we just eat lunch and dinner and sometimes, uh, when I was young, I used to do breakfast. We don't have this habit of snacking in my family. And what you see on me, it's a lot of uh, healthy fats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the truth is that I was thinking about it recently because I started educating myself on uh, dieting. Yeah. And if you think about it, we are the only animal in nature that we are not eating for survival anymore. We are eating for satisfaction. You go to McDonald's, they have these amazing photos yeah. that makes you drool. Yeah. But actually, it's a very heavy processed food. It has a lot of sugar inside. You see a burger and you don't sugar and combine salt. to your mind that it's uh, full of sugar and salt. I agree. But the reality is that it actually is. And to be honest, uh, now that I try to eat healthy, it's, uh, first of all, more, way more expensive to eat healthy and more time consuming because you go to the supermarket, they have the 
ready cooked meals, that it's something cooked than frozen. When I was young, I remember that we were buying milk and it would expire in two days. Now it stays seven days. So you understand that it's not pure milk. It has all these additives inside. I do understand even the fish that are farmed, the chicken that you eat that's not grass fed, everything. They are vaccinated. Is, they are, they are vaccinated. Yeah. They are fed anti antibiotics and a lot of things that are going on right now. Chat GPT can teach them everything. Uh, people need to learn to ask the right questions. It's very weird with Chat GPT. I had mixed feelings. Like it feels like a tool yeah. that you can use with all, all new technology actually. Yeah. But it's also scary at a lot of points. You have used it a lot actually, yeah? I have used it a lot. People call the words say the word sentient and it can have its own consciousness. I don't think it can do that. I don't think it will ever We're be able not to there do yet. that. No, we won't ever be able to okay. we won't ever be there. I'll tell you why. Because Chat GPT, even though it's a large language model, it's an advanced version version of a Google search. Yeah. So do you think Google is self conscious? Of course not. When However you... the the difference is the intelligence part. That, however if the ChatGPT has intelligence or not? That's a bit the but, big question. But the thing is, ChatGPT is trained to be intelligent. It hasn't developed intelligence. You see the difference. We have five senses. Touch, taste, smell, we can hear, uh, yeah, we can see. see. These are the five senses we have to scan the universe around us. We are three-dimensional species yeah. who can look at things in two dimensions. But ChatGPT can't do either of it. It doesn't have any senses. It can't look at anything in two dimensions. It cannot feel the universe around it. Yeah. And what it can only do is that it can be fed data to act like it's intelligent. So for example, if you go to the end of the 19th century, right? And if you just open google.com and if you ask a guy some question, right? What do you think about so and so? And he'll be like, I don't know. He'll be like, do you want an answer? He'll be like, okay, show me the answer. You search for it and you show it to the guy. He'll be like, what? How does it know? Can it think on its own? True. It can't. But because you're from the future, you know that it's just Google search. Yeah. People have this misconception that AI is going to take over because it's going to be self-conscious. AI could only take over if people controlling it. I agree with you in a big level. I believe that uh, there is something like the living beings have. We have a body and we have a soul as well. And the soul part, you can't create it. So I agree with you that it's an intelligence, but it will never have, it will never be a life form like we are. However, if you at some point take the intelligence of chat GTP, the source code, and you place it inside a robot, will have a physical being as well. Like mm. if you teach it somehow how it learned the language to have cameras instead of eyes and start scanning the environment, like the technology that has uh, the Elon Musk's uh, cars, for instance, that they can do pretty well yeah. scanning the surrounding and autopiloting yeah. the vehicle. Yeah. That it can have a bigger presence. Uh, we don't understand the human brain that well course yeah. and even though we have the five senses the five senses are connected to the brain and we do know that whenever we look at something whenever we feel something whenever we feel pain there are electrical currents that are being passed into our brain to the neurons I don't think we will ever be able to replicate or maybe not ever but at least in the next few decades I don't see it happening yeah if, okay. AI is just the next step of Google search <laughs> for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. That, that's okay, what I okay, feel okay. like right now. However, if you see like in my lifetime, when I was a kid, we didn't have cell phones. We had cars, of course, we had television, uh, phones, but we didn't have internet. We didn't have cell phones. The first game I had as a console, it was an Atari that had only these two lines and one square. Mm. It was like a ball and yeah. you do I this and it, it goes over there. And now you have all these 
the new Harry Potter uh, game, for instance. You go there and it's uh, photorealistic, 3D, it's a whole space you can walk around, you can jump on the magic wands and fly away. The, the leap in my lifetime, it was huge, the technological leap. So if you take this scale of technology going up, 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 up. And then, the, you, and the, then you realize the it, it still wasn't up. It was not up. <laughs> yeah. It was. It was in the. It was. Yeah. It was like this. It, it was like this, and now it's gonna be like this. That, that's the scary part. The fear is that uh, at some point, if ChatGPT starts to creating a new version of itself, that it's better and smarter than the previous, then it will reach a point that. It will be. It will not need us, mm. supposedly. Mm. So uh, if, tr don't worry. It will still need us for it to, for us to ask it questions. <laughs> but uh, there there is still a limit to that. So for example, if I have a server which can have one gigabyte of data, if my language model has one gigabyte of data in it, and then I need some RAM. For it to start learning, it needs to start cross-collaborating. It really depends how many gigabytes of storage do I add into its memory, right? If uh, something really super intelligence needs to exist, I don't know the scale that they mentioned. I don't remember the scale of intelligence that they mentioned, but they did mention that computers the size of a small planet would have to exist. Yeah, Actually, the first computers, they were way bigger than what we have now, yeah? Mm. They were saying exactly that back then. The mindset back then was that uh, if you want to have a computer that calculates 100 times faster than what they had, mm. that you would need to build a computer that's the size of a city to do it. Yeah. However, this was a mistake because now we have the smartphones that are small like that. So yeah. as technology and like, grows... And I, I think even if they had built something the size of city, my smartphone would still be faster than yeah, that. probably. I agree with you. So now you have the smartphones because they use new technology that was not available back then. Yeah. So maybe new kind of technology would come. Like some people say it's the quantum computers or something mm. like that. Quantum computers, they work with qubits. So when we, when we talk about normal computers and transistors, they have ones and zeros. So it can either be one or zero. And then it could either be zero or one. It can't be at both states at the yeah. same time. Quantum computers, they can be at both states at the same time. So it can be one and a zero. It can be zero and a one. So, but the thing about quantum computers, it, it needs it to be very cold. So the minimum temperature that we can go into in this universe is minus 273 degrees Celsius. It needs to be very close to that. I think minus 272 point something something. Okay. Uh, and then a quantum computer can work. And now to scale up that cold part, to, I don't think it's possible. But when we talk about that, I feel like even analog, computer, analog computers could start making a comeback. Analog computers, I don't know how to explain it to you. Uh, because I don't know much, I don't have much information about mm -hmm. them. But analog computers work differently. So, for example, uh, we have the weather pattern, right? And to predict the weather for tomorrow, we feed the computer ones and zeros, and it starts predicting from from the ones and zeros it's fed that what could be the weather tomorrow. Analog computers work slightly differently. They uh, have different electrical current flowing through them and when you flow f so for example if it's windy it's gonna be a little bit of a different electrical current flowing through them and if it's raining it's gonna be a little bit of a different electrical current flowing through them so it makes predictions using the electrical current okay I'm not sure if I said it right <laughs> I hope your podcast doesn't <laughs> I hope not a lot of people come and watch it and then be like, oh, this guy sounds smart. And then be like, oh, no, 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 it's not the way it works. Yeah, but sounds like a different technology, I guess. Yeah, sounds... Uh, analog computers, uh, let's see. Maybe you could have consciousness if you combine analog and uh, binary. Okay. Right? That's the thing that I don't believe. I think consciousness comes from the soul, that's something spiritual. Yeah. Uh, but intelligence, maybe we can't create 
intelligence. And I was thinking like right now in Earth, we are like the most intelligent uh, being. And I see how we treat the rest of the animals. Like we build cities and we have them on the side. Mm. And some of them we take like pets, pets but the most rest. of them we mm. have them either in zoos or we le left them a little bit of land. And mm. I feel like if a new intelligent life comes that's better than us, they will treat us like we treat the animals, kind of. Mm. Like either the way they will we use treat some of us the as way pets, we, yeah. they will have some zoos that uh, <laughs> they exhibit some of us in, in cages. Yeah. And some of us, hopefully, they will leave us some land to to be free and they will visit us on their vacation to see how this oh, look, oh, look at that look at that guy look dancing <laughs> hopefully not but yeah i mean intelligence is a different thing i am really interested in ai and yeah. machine learning and so far so good i can confirm that there is no self-conscious ai coming but if there are aliens coming then i'm not sure if there are aliens coming, I don't think they're prepared. <laughs> Goodbye. This is my last part. This is my last video recording. <laughs>